Alrighty. Where do you where do you live? I live in South Korea. Oh, you you do? Yes. <laughs> it was a long trip. A long haul here. just to come to the Montclair Film Festival. <laughs> what the hell are you doing in South Korea? Uh, my husband works there. And. Yeah, well, I sort of feel the same way a little bit. I love, I like being in Asia, but yeah, we don't, well, it's it's hard to be so far from family. We've lived overseas for almost five years, and okay. I'm ready to get back to my friends and family. And I imagine, how often are you able to return home to visit? Um, you I have to make a film in order to do that, right? Yeah, like exactly. To give you <laughs> yeah, to give me an, an excuse to come home. Uh-huh. I get back pretty often, but... You know, my family's so really spread out, so it doesn't, you know, I can see like one at a time. Right. But. Yeah, I guess. How long is the flight from uh, Seoul? We're yeah, we're about an hour and a half south of Seoul. Yeah, so. to New York. So what's that flight look like? Um, it's a, 11 to 12 hours okay. to San Francisco and then... Oh boy, right. San, I mean, it's if you can get direct, it's like 15 or 16 hours, but uh-huh. that's w- uh, too expensive for me. <laughs> Right, no, I understand. We're talking to Jessica Oreck, who is uh, has come all the way from uh, from South Korea just to do this podcast, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Forgive the pulsating music in the background, but we are at the uh, Montclair Film Festival, and uh, you're here for your latest film. I've been following your film since, uh, well, I guess since uh, the Beetle, Beetle Queen Conquers Tokyo. No, yeah, no. Yeah, you got there. Did Beetle Queen Conquers Tokyo. Okay, good. Yeah, and good uh, Atsinki. Yeah. Uh, the, the Arctic Cowboys. Yeah. That's a slightly wrong. The story of Arctic Cowboys. The story Cowboys. of Arctic Cowboys. See, yeah. I know at least I, I know what I'm wrong. Yeah, and, yeah. And then um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 gog, <laughs> the Yaga. Wait a minute. <laughs> the Vanquishing of the Baba Yaga. Uh, the Witch Baba Yaga. The Witch Baba Yaga. Yeah. Yes. I've seen them all. Oh, thank you. There, and, I have this thing about titles. Yeah, I, don't, I, I yeah. insist on having totally mem- like titles that you can't possibly remember or if you try and tell someone at a party they just are baffled yet they're all they're almost like each one is almost like a, a sentence like, well, yeah or or like uh a uh what are the the japanese poems again the the oh, haiku. like a haiku each yeah. or something like that yeah right, and this so one's no exception i mean it's a long title also that's true so and this one's uh, now i'm gonna total now i'm self-conscious i thought i think i'm overthinking it so i want to make one sure. man dies a million times one million yeah there was a i just saw this other guy's film at uh tribeca uh and his film is called the place of no words and i i could not get it right <laughs> i could i couldn't do it it was like a, a place with no names or <laughs> like the the place of the pine, beyond the pines you know like every anything but a place of no words but eventually and then I like put it up online and I saw that I still got the title wrong, even though I'm, I usually try to, you know, if there's any yeah. question I go to a, and I copy and paste, you know, it doesn't matter. That was not going to happen. So, yeah. But um, so I've been following her and I'm just like wondering who is Jessica Ora? Because uh, I remember when Beetle Queen came out and it was at like BAM Cinema. I just remember being in a lot of festivals in New York. Maybe not BAM. I may be wrong. But it was at, had to be in New York City at some festival. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So, and I was intrigued, and you were working with Sean Price Williams, who I knew through his narrative cinematography work and his relationships, and I would run it, you know, with like the, uh, the yeah. Savdies, and, uh, and I did an event with them once, and uh, where I hosted a, a party for Daddy Long Legs, and things like that. And then I was kind of curious to what I seen, because you were doing something so different than most of the people around that. Right, so yeah. were you, what did you study in college? What, do you, what was your major? I studied filmmaking with minors in biology, ecology, there you go. environmental history, and botany. Mic drops. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've answered all the questions. Of course you did, because like I say you don't make science fiction. You make science space fiction. Yeah, I mean, it's this is like, my first fiction, though. The rest, I mean, and I would true, call right. this one more documentary than fiction. But, Interesting. Yeah, but it gets classified as fiction, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, no, no you're right. The other ones are documentaries uh, where environmental sciences that type or biological sciences are often key and then even though this like you just said is a fiction film it's still it's still very much dealing with with the same uh subject matter yeah well ethnobiology is what Eth- i ethnobiology is what, thanks yeah, i'm not a scientist no 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 that's fine it's just the way that cultures interact with the natural world yeah and that's really what i would interest me so this really came from i'm going to guess from those days maybe the seeds, if you will, if I can of, borrow a, of an expression that might this film comes pertain from to no, no, 
your pursuit, your artistic pursuit, seems to spawn from, I keep using words from, from yeah, science, science botany word. or science, yeah. from your studies. Well, I knew that that was what I wanted even to before do before I went to college, yeah. So I we can even go back further, is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. So go back further, because <laughs> well, I'm curious about um, it. I grew up without TV, um, and I really loved science, but I really didn't want to be a scientist. And I really loved teaching, but I didn't want to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. then when I was 14 in mm-hmm. my high school botany class, mm-hmm. um, we saw David Attenborough's Private Life of Plants. And I had never seen a nature program before because I'd never seen TV. And it really blew my mind. And I was like, that's what I want to make. I want to make nature programs. And then I worked for 10 years at the American Museum of Natural History. And um, I worked as a live animal keeper and a docent. And so I got to see thousands and thousands and thousands of people interacting with live animals. And it was... I was so much more interested in the way that cultures were taught to look at animals than I was. And I mean, I love the animals and I still, you know, I still work with animals, but it was, I was just more fascinated by that. Like how, how we really are, you know, how we learn to look at animals and nature. And how is that? Like uh, for me, I was brought up with circuses and zoos. I mean, Uh, that's not true though. I mean, it depends, you know, there, there are infinite um, there are infinite ways to be brought up, but it all stems from that. You know, yeah. it all comes. It, we are really are taught how to see it. Right. It's not I, just like an innate relationship that we have. Yes. Right. I understand. It's brought to your. It's it, through it's through culture. Behavior. It's your learned yeah. behavior. Uh, and and so I I say the the zoos and the and 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 circuses, which I actually. When I was growing up, those were, I should say, the broader way that most of my generation and the generations, you know, around that that time were interacted with animals. And I myself, I would say, had a different experience in that I grew up on the summers going to a summer camp, a small summer camp that was on a farm. So I got exposed to like riding horses, and you know, as a city kid, I got I was milking milking cows, wow, plucking eggs in the morning. Uh, we got up early and we we did these things and 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 we brought the milk back, and they pasteurized it, but they didn't homogenize it. I think things like that. But we had these things growing up, so I was actually from a very young age exposed to things hmm. that changed my own perspective on my relationship with 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 animals. I guess you could say, you know. Yeah. Well, and nature and where and nature. Your food comes from and right. all of the things that yes. are actually really critical. Yeah. Yeah. But your films are far from the didactic type of uh, environmental documentaries or science documentaries that we see so much in the commercial uh, marketplace. So your films are abstract is the right word, I think, that you're, you're challenging your audiences, you're asking them to lean in and figure out your stories and your characters, whether they're fiction or not. Or not. Yeah, definitely I think I make films for audiences that are willing to work for them. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not a passive viewer. So I'm, you know, the itch that I want to scratch is one for something that's really engages and forces me to think, mm-hmm. and forces me to ask questions outside of the world of the film. Interesting. So. Intelligent, actually, that you, since you brought it up, is, is asking the exact opposite, historically. I mean, it's like saying, sit back, turn off. Don't you know? Yeah, now don't just, engage. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just you know, just escape, escape, escape. Is, yeah. is a lot of what filmmaking yeah. is. Yeah, these lean days. back. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I mean, and that serves its purpose at times. You know, when you want to decompress, I suppose, or yeah. And I have nothing. I mean, I love those types of films too. Yeah, but right. That's just you know. It's not what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And if I, and if that's what I'm, you know, there are two different ways of approaching it, and that's definitely yeah. not the. Um, it's not always what I'm looking for. Right. So. Man has a million ways. No, no a man, million a man, One man dies, <laughs> one a, million man dies times. a million times. Here you're taking historical, an historical event in, in, in history and you are playing with it a little bit, right? You're changing the time right. frame. So it's a true story um, and everything that happens in the film happened in this, real life. Right. But it's set the in siege sort of, of an alternative present near future. The siege on, on Leningrad. Yeah, the siege of Leningrad, yeah. Of Leningrad, specifically. From 1941 to 1944. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The central character, the two main characters are botanists who f- are in love. Yeah, and they work at the world's first seed bank. Okay. Um, and which was in Leningrad. Yeah, which was in Leningrad. It was started by a na- na- Nikolai Vavilov. And it was, um, uh-huh. you know, before they even understood genetics, this guy Vavilov, und- you know, realized that we were losing genetic diversity and traveled all around the world and collected these seeds that are 
com- they're at this point completely invaluable because we can't they you know have been extinct for yeah you know almost a century and um so he was he was so prescient he was so ahead of his time and uh he was an amazing character but right. then while i was doing research about him you know, you read about this this story of the siege, which is in itself is incredible and mm-hmm. wild. I mean, it's 300 days where Leningrad is cut off from the outside world, and one in every four people are starving to death. And do I mean starve to death? Like one in every four people die, which is, you know, one of the worst sieges that we that's yeah. been written about. And yeah. um, you know, it's in written history is what I should say. But so um, that in itself is incredible that that happened. But then on top of that, you know there are these scientists working at the seed bank during that time. And nowadays our seed banks are all frozen in cryogenic slumber and you don't even look at the seeds. Mm -hmm. But back then in order to keep the seeds viable, you had to plant them, harvest them and replant them the next season. So these people are growing food in the seed bank and, you know, are surrounded by beans and rice and nuts. And they, I mean, they have protein. Yeah, they have yeah. food. They yeah. have sustenance all around them, and they choose not and to eat starving. it. And they're starving. Yeah. For they, the bigger... Yeah, they choose not to eat it because w- they believe that what they are saving will save future generations. The moment where her friend... Is it a friend that's starving, and she pleads with her to change her mind and, you know, take the their, their seeds and to, to eat, you know, share them so they don't starve to death. And uh, she... I almost filled in her, her reaction, which is, I'll die before I do it, you know, which... Yeah, and, you know, they did. I mean, not all of them, but many of the scientists yeah. did. They chose to starve to death. because They're heroes in that yeah, sense. Absolutely. I mean, you can't argue, right, with that. And that was that was what attracted <laughs> me to the story also, was that they were just ordinary people. They weren't, you know, they weren't superheroes. They didn't wear fancy costumes. Right. They were, were just scientists. Doing mm-hmm. heroic things. Let's Doing, maybe that's a better yeah. way of putting it. Yeah. I think, you know banding around the term heroes maybe yeah. lofty or yeah. something i don't know but they were behaving heroically certainly yeah and you you what you shot this in in actually in in well it's now st petersburg of course right leningrad has been gone back to st back petersburg and forth. yeah it yeah. was petrograd yeah then and it was then leningrad and now it's well, it was petrograd Peters- and then st petersburg st. and then petersburg. leningrad and now yeah. st petersburg so again. in a couple yeah. of months it should be back to leningrad again. <laughs> i know <laughs> well <laughs> sadly actually it's possible um the yeah, so we shot on location in St. Petersburg, and actually we were allowed to shoot on location in the actual seed bank, which still exists okay. in the middle of St. P. And it was amazing to shoot there. What an incredible place that is! I mean, it's a wonderful, wild wormhole of time where you've got you know the building from the 1800s, and then you have you know the desk from the 1940s, and you have the monitor from the 2000s, and then yeah. on top of that, you've got the laptop. You know, th- it's yeah. just like this accretion of material and yes. people and history. Sets that's, you don't have to build. You, yeah. <laughs> you well, must pr- have just had like when you walked in there, you must have just thought there were many. I've yeah, there sk- were many sets where it was like we actually don't really have to do that much. I mean, right. we still had an incredible set designer who did incredible things but the the actual seed bank locations we didn't dress that much mm. and um yeah what, and we worked where oh sorry no please. um we worked with scientists that still work at the seed bank with the act you know to to how train the actors in okay. you know in how to handle handle the seeds and what they would actually have been doing at that time yeah. and yeah, yeah. and they were yeah they were amazing it was amazing to get to work there and just to be in that place like an incredible yeah an incredible did you, location did you work with a producer who helped did, did, was there a Russian producer? Did you work with uh, people that helped to pave the way? And if so, how did you arrange that? You're in South Korea. You're an American. I mean, it seems like this is an incredibly yeah, uh, challenging. I, I had shot a film. In, I had shot a film in Russia in 2010. Uh, I think uh-huh. it was 2010 that we shot Baba Yaga, which shot partially right. in in Russia. Okay. And um, so I knew I had a fixer that I still was in touch with from Mm -hmm. that film. And he put me in touch with a, you know, a sort of production coordinator. Mm -hmm. Um, And this production coordination team did an amazing job. And they just, I mean, we had an incredible crew. It It was, I keep using the word incredible, but it really was an amazing experience. They were, it was, yeah, I've never experienced such, um, they were all really young and they just worked together so seamlessly and it, there was never any issue. It was, I don't know, it was a wildly successful uh, and peaceful and friendly atmosphere. I made lifelong friends and mm-hmm. it was great. Well, you don't know. You 
if they're lifelong yet, I mean. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I imagine that I'm they will kidding, be. Teasing yeah. you. Are you? Do you speak Russian? What I languages don't. do you speak? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, just a little. Mm -hmm. Just a little. Enough but, um, to get into trouble. We no, definitely <laughs> not into trouble. But um, uh -huh. it was it was actually really interesting working with the actors. Um, they spoke a little bit of English en enough to communicate with me. Mm -hmm. um, we still had an interpreter, but we didn't use him very often. A lot of times it was just us. And then my second AD um, had gone to, to theater school. And so she was great in um, sort of helping be a, an acting coach if if needed. Stanislavski so there method. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they mm -hmm. all have that uh, yeah. training. But, um, but it was great to work in a foreign language because we were able to... I was able to sort of cut through the performance in a way. And it was like either I, I, even though I knew what they were saying, but I didn't have to understand the words. I just either believed them or I didn't believe them. And it was a really intuitive process and it worked. I think it worked really well. It's almost like and a silent movie, yeah, right? I mean, it, what's the difference really? Yeah, it is very much like a silent yeah. movie, except it, there's such a musicality to that language. And I love I, Pravda, there, Pravda. There, there's a, yeah, some yes. of the poems that she reads in the film, the way they sound in Russian to me is just, I wish I could, I wish I could make those sounds. That's, mm -hmm. they're perfect. Um, but so yeah, it was really, it was a, it was a pleasure to make this film, and it was a pleasure working with all of them. It's not probably a pleasure to watch. It's a bleak film, but yeah, I didn't, <laughs> want, I didn't know what if I should say something like that. It's not a, it's no musical comedy, yeah. but I mean, I, I didn't want to. I don't think that's good marketing on my part <laughs> to say that. <laughs> well, but I don't want people feeling, to go in, yeah. you know, not understanding that. Not prepared. This is, yeah, this is a, it's it's a hard bit, story. It's right. hopeful. There's triumph and hope at the yeah, end. But yeah. it's a, you know, it, this is history. It's bleak. So go in on it if you're feeling really good about your life. And, uh, <laughs> or if you're not. You I mean, it's, I think you could, do, you could go either way. Okay, but. right. W the actors uh, did. Uh, what did they? What did they think? First of all, did they have to lose weight for the role? Did you ask them to? No, we were they already we malnourished because no. they look very much so. No, with that, that was just makeup. But okay. we. Um, but they are also thin. I mean, they're, they're, yeah, you didn't we, use CG. I know that you didn't have the. Yeah, we definitely did not use CG. But <laughs> um, we chose. It was actually casting the actress was very difficult because Russian women have very round faces, which are really hard to make look skinny. Yes, and so we found they have but, those broad cheekbones. Yeah, yeah. but. We found Elisa who had very sharp features and a, and a thin face, and she was, yeah, yeah she was right. Thin. Elisa and Maxime right. is the is the her yeah. her lover or, yeah. yeah. Again, the name of the film is um, A Million Ways to Die, and it's one man one dies million dies a million <laughs> times. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. It's like a place where I, t I finally learned it, but yeah. a man has a million ways to die. <laughs> no, one man dies. You know, the problem with titles is there's so many are just sentences now, so. Yeah. Which, you know, is a musicality and, and certainly uh, an appeal to them, but it's hard for... Well, this is... And this is a, an excerpt from really a poem didn't. that is read in the film that was written by a woman that... that you know, she wrote it during the siege. Um, so, wow. Yeah. All of, the, all of the narration in the film is excerpts from journals and diaries yes. that were written during the siege. Um, so it, there's... To me, there's a lot of documentary elements in the film because of that. I mean, so much of it for me was about the research and coming from a documentary background it was really important that I was true to the story yeah, you I just wanted it to be relevant and yeah. I feel like World War II is it is it's losing its um, immediacy or yeah, rel uh, immediacy uh, maybe yeah, and I think I think for young people you know it yeah. feels really just so far away it might as well be sure. ancient Egypt and it's I didn't want to make a film that wasn't relevant because the seed bank is still relevant. So you moved at the time for that reason yeah. to the near future? Yeah. So the, the siege is... Well, and also, I mean, history repeats itself. Yeah, so for sure. It's not, it's not far-fetched that this No, is and we don't learn from history. No, apparently. we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, astonishingly. We make the same mistakes over and over. Yeah. Yeah. And you would think you'd made a number of kind of dark films, maybe... Well, actually, I can't say that. You have made some gorgeous... I would uh, say all of looking. my others are like very positive. They, they are, yeah, and they're be <laughs> actually exquisite to look at. Yeah, well, so your that's your true. your partnership with uh, with Sean Price Williams is a one that's paid oh, dividends, I guess, because it's you have a great slate of films that you. Oh, thank you, know, you. Well, yeah. he he was a big part of. I mean, I've known Sean since I was nineteen, so oh, he yeah? was a big part of my. You know, he's he, he and I. Yeah, an he is my muse. I mean, we yeah we work incredibly well together. It's very. Um, 
I mean, he's pretty difficult to work with as a human, but he and I know exactly the same references. You know, we right. have, sure, yeah. it's so easy for me to be like, like that thing that we did that one time. And he's like, oh yeah, I gotcha. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So it's, um, so there's a similar, yeah, like uh, aesthetic and a similar, yeah. The, we know yeah, each other well and it's yeah, there you easy go. to work together. Yeah. yeah. Right now we're at the Montclair Film Festival where you're having your, may I guess, I don't know, is it a north, northeast, what, what do you call this premiere? I don't, a New Jersey premiere. New Jersey <laughs> premiere. Know. Did you already screen in New York City? No, no, no. Okay, so yet. it's, not yet. is this your U.S. premiere? Mm-mm. No, 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 we premiered at South By. Oh, you did? Um, okay, yeah. I missed it this mm-hmm. year, so I was, uh, for personal reasons, I, I couldn't get to South By this year. So, But that's why I love coming to Montclair Film Festival, because I can actually catch up with so many of the films yeah. that are the best from all the festivals, they, they really, you know, Tom uh, Hall, yeah. who's the programmer here, yeah, does a smashing job with programming yeah. the festival. And you have how many more f- screenings at the festival? Um, of, of Two. We have, this is, yeah, we have today, tonight and tomorrow. And then, um, yeah, and then we'll be at Maryland next weekend. One Man Dies <laughs> a Billion Times is the name of the, uh, the film. The director is Jessica Oreck. Can you announce any others yet or is it too soon? Any yeah, other? That's just you have you know. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That's Mary, right. But Mary there are others space. lined up. Yeah. Some here in the states or. Yeah. Well, that's good. So are you going to be able to attend much? I don't know. We'll I'm glad then I, I met you here. You were at South by though, obviously. Yeah, I was at South by since it was your premiere. And right? I was at Ashland because it's actually pretty. Sh- I mean, short. Ha ha ha. It's like 13 hours. Yeah, <laughs> but it's in the general vicinity of the world. Yeah, and it was. I, I, <laughs> and yeah, you would do travel. The that world. festival's really lovely, so it was worth going. I but haven't been to that one. It's, it's, it's in really Ashland. Lovely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. In Ashland, Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh. Well, I, I'm really glad because I really have been trying to get you on for. I don't know why Beale Queen it didn't happen, but I do remember wanting hmm. to to sit with you thank you but it's better off this way because even though I fumbled your title at least half a dozen times <laughs> <laughs> and I promised to do it another after <laughs> yeah uh, but fine. you know um, hopefully things are I'm a little bit better at this uh, I may be del- you know deluding myself but uh, <laughs> it's really nice to meet you yeah it's nice to meet you too thank you thank you thanks for thanks yeah. for having me <laughs> <laughs> no, you're <wrong. laughs> nice to be had <laughs>